Hello, so good afternoon to all of you. So our esteemed panelists have basically tried to articulate the problem, the problem that is lying, and they have also tried to preempt the problem and preempt the challenges that could lie before us uh, and the speculative strong AI would come and in that sense. But then as uh, they were talking about Indian intellectual traditions and Indian wisdom, so one of the texts like Kane Upanishad says that Yasya Matam Tas Matam Matam yasna vedasa. One who has not known, then that should be known. And one who has known, he has got, got more to know. Right. So, on that note, I would like to start with the question that uh, Varun passed to me, that are there any resources available in Indian intellectual traditions which could have got the capacity to uplift and upgrade human consciousness to a level where the sense of cognitive freedom and the sense of cognitive autonomy could be gained by human and then we could meet with the challenges of cognition uh, meet with the challenges of um, challenge of cognition uh, challenge of cognitive manipulation as it is being stipulated so there are many kind of text and many kind of technologies of self that are available in different schools of indian philosophy like bigyan bharat tantra comes from kashmir savism that talks about 112 ways of epistemic frameworks to access the ontology of consciousness, the third layer of consciousness that lies beyond the ontic layers of body and mind, then there are texts in other traditions. What I will be doing right now that I am taking one matter from one text and through it I like to elaborate that how it could uplift human consciousness. So the text is Drig Drish Vivekam. That text is a Vedantic text that is being authored by Adi Sankrachars, though it is also attributed to Vidyaran Swami because the author is not known as in Indian tradition only the ideas are needed to be known more. That's why it has been done in that sense. So this basically has got three terms. Drig, that is the seer, who is seeing. Dris, that is the seen. And Vivek is knowing. Vivek is discerning. Vivek is discriminating between what is sar and what is asar, what is real and what is unreal. And this text starts with the presumption or hypothesis that there is an autonomous domain of consciousness. It is not an epiphenomenon. It has got an independence of its own. And it, human beings have got the capacity, that if, uh, the kind of cognitive capacity to access that domain of consciousness. It starts with that frame. So I would be doing two things. First, at the level of experiential epistemology, how it talks about the metha, and th then through the level of Gyan Marg, how it could, we could understand that. So it talks about in sense of two things that we start looking from outside. The, the verse is, with, clo with closed eyes see the inner being wi within you. So it says that when the world is the seer and human body is the seen, uh, when the world is the seen and human eyes or human body is the seer, then we, when we go deeper, then human body itself can become the seen. It can become the sense of, uh, it can become the site of investigation. And human mind becomes the seer at that point of time. Then we once again, if we try to go deeper, then human mind itself becomes the scene. The thoughts that are going on in human mind. The different kind of sensations that are coming at the level of chit. And the inner mind becomes the seer. So this is the meditative way that is to, it, it talks about. And in this process, finally going deeper and deeper and as the level of cognition keeps, uh, keeps interpenetrating into the different layers of our reality and existence, one reaches to that layer of consciousness, the third layer of ontology, what uh, like Ashtav Ashtavakra Gita talks about being Vish Sakchi. Uh, the witness of uh, the cosmic witness of the state or Bhagavad Gita talks in terms of going to the avastha trigunatit being beyond the three gunas uh, satraj and tam gunas so different kind of words have been used but that remains the substrate of all the realities that could be seen and unseen that is autonomous domain but it it remains the base of all the other uh, kind of layers and onto that we are talking about and this thing can also be understood through the process of knowledge and gyan mark because whenever we see anything in this world this text talks about that it it crosses through four different stages sangya vigyan samvedana and sanskar if you hear any voice or if you are seeing any person that particular thing is sangya that something is there 
देन विज्ञान इज हु इज से हु इज दैट पर्सन फ्रॉम वेयर दैट वॉइस इज कमिंग दैट इज द सेकेंड लेवल विज्ञान दिज ऑल थिंग्स हैपन इन हैपन विद इन नैनो सेकेंड्स विद इन आवर माइंड द थर्ड इज संवेदना दैट इज सेंसेशंस दैट वॉट एवर सेंसेशन इज रिलेटेड टू डैट वॉइस और डैट पर्सन अकॉर्डिंग टू आवर कंडीशनिंग आवर माइंड दैट हैज हैपन टिल टूडे that starts running on our body and our uh, our human mind basically it may be the sensation of pleasure if if we have got good relations with that person it may be the sensation of pain and agony we if we have got some kind of repulsion with that person there are many kind of sensations that keep moving on human body that is sensation and the fourth and the fourth part the fourth part is sanskar if we have got the identification if we identify and we attach with those sensations that become the part of our existence and that comes on our chitta and that that forms the part and this method says that if we are in a state of sakchi bhav if we are just in a state of witnessing what j krishna murti talks about in terms of choiceless awareness we are just aware we are not identifying ourselves with those sensations then the very nature of the uh, of the sensations is appearance and disappearance appearance and disappearance only when we identify with those sensations then they get solidified to our chit so if we just we remain in a state of witness sakshi bhav that this text talks about and different philosophers talks about then those sanskars and sensations start losing their potency and once they start losing their potency the process of erasure the process of erasing those sanskars from our chitta and our inner layer of mind starts happening and this way we start going deeper and deeper into the level of uh, in the into the level of cognitive consciousness and cognitive thinking and human beings have got the capacity to go to that level where they could attain cognitive autonomy and cognitive freedom so that third layer of ontology is something which uh, people uh, and human beings in the wake of the crisis that is going on they should try to access it and i coin it in terms of Triveni Sangam of Consciousness, as the Sangam we know, where Ganga, Yamuna, and Saraswati come and confluence with each other. Here, Sat, Chit, and Anand, theorized in terms of ontology, epistemology, and axiology, the question of ethics. That AI is completely missing. These two, these three come together, and that level of consciousness, if we get and we can get, then from from that springboard of consciousness, if ethical dispositions of idea would come. if our cognitive consciousness would come then i guess that uh, in the wake when this uh, all the debates of uh, penrose and copman model seems to be a possibility and the rapid challenges of ai is there so at one level we could uplift and upgrade our human consciousness to that uh, uh, to that level of cognitive autonomy and at the second level we could ensure that the int- uh, integration expansion and integration of ai happens with human value and human dignity that is the way i want to say